book clubbers welcome back ah oh, so excited to talk to you today we got a fun 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 section to discuss of midnight tides i'm jeff canada i'm here with lana bashinsky hi lana hello good morning and i gotta say it book good book real good book good in fact no spoilers yet but i i'm i'm ready to pronounce chapter four of midnight tides <laughs> top to bottom Maybe my favorite chapter we've read so far. Agreed. I'm not Agreed. just of this novel, of the series. Yeah. Like top to bottom, jam-packed with fun. I'm in love with the Bedick brothers. Ooh, uh, oh. fun dynamics. Good. Fun. Book good. Book good. Book real good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But we're not going to go there yet. Uh, we always start the show with a non-spoiler topic uh, that doesn't have anything to do with the actual chapters we're reading. So that if you want to hang out, even if you're not caught up, there's still something to enjoy. So Lana, I know you have a topic to bring to the table this week. What do you got? I do. I remember we were chatting a couple of weeks ago and you actually, we actually were, I was just about to tell a story right before, <laughs> before the show and I cut myself off uh, because it was related to books. So I said, might, might as well do it on air. Question for you is, have you ever been to like live book readings? Have you gone and listened to an author read passages from their own book? Um Ever. Like at a bookstore or at a yes. public event. Yes. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I, I'm racking my brain. I have moderated, I think twice, I've moderated uh, one of those type of readings where the author has read a section from the book and then I've been around to ask questions and kind of facilitate the audience asking questions and, you know, moderate. I don't think I've actually attended a book reading on my own, just as a fan of the author. And I'm kind of, now that you ask, disappointed in myself about that, because I think (laughs) that'd be something I would love to do. And I just have never done. I feel like I'm very bad at like, like I follow a, a couple authors on social media but i'm always lost in like the game dev news and so i I feel like i feel like i'm not i don't have my finger on the pulse of like where to get info about book readings i feel like i have to get you know connected with a local bookstore in order to get that i've only been to one book reading before um and i went through this phase where i was reading like only biographical um or autobiographical like books from comedians Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's uh, so many good ones. Yeah. So many good ones. So many yeah. good ones. And I read David Cross's one. Oh, I love and him. And he had a, a book reading at the uh, the Barnes & Noble's or the Chapters or whatever that one that was closed called um, in Union Square. And me and a buddy of mine went to his book reading there. And of course, like listening to him like read from his book is like listening to stand up comedy in a way. Right. And yeah. so it was so funny. He was so de- <laughs> deprecating. Uh, you know, I don't know if folks are familiar with David Cross's humor, but it's like, you know, got a little grit to it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so it was, it was hilarious. It was an excellent time. It was, the place was packed. And then afterwards, uh, you know, when I was a student, I was like, like many students are just so broke like unbelievably broke. (laughs) And so my friend and I split the cost of the book and we were like, we'll trade it back and forth. I don't have, the book's nowhere to be seen. I don't have it. We're not friends anymore, obviously. Could you Um, sign it to me on page one and her (laughs) on page two? And we'll we'll, just pretend as we swap it back and forth, that's the only page that's signed. Well, we went up there and we were like, (laughs) can you sign it? We're sharing it. And he signed it. Hope you never break up. Oh, that's (laughs) cute. And I was like, 
we're not dating. He wishes. <laughs> uh, but it was a, it was a great time. It was a great time. And it would definitely be something I would. Yeah. Be, I, I, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead, please. Well, I never thought I'd be the type of person who would like enjoy hearing the yeah. books because I like having my own like voice, my own like impression of how things are read. Like comedy books felt like it mm. broke that because I want to hear their voice. Right. Because that makes sense for the comedy medium to me. It's in but, their rhythm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. since I've been getting into audiobooks more and more, I think it'd be something I'd be even more interested in now because I now I want to know how does the author say that? How what what are, what is the author's rhythm that they would pronounce these characters or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so it was interesting to hear uh Steven Erickson say that he he doesn't really do those anymore. He doesn't enjoy them as much as just, you know, going to panels Beats. or talking, just yeah. talking to, to fans, in, you know, or whatever. I, and um, I, yeah, I, I know that there's a place here in Denver, Tattered Cover, as I brought up before, that that does these fairly frequently. Um, I should just be better about getting myself out and doing that. I think it would be, it'd be really fun. I, I don't know why I've never done it. I think that would be something I would, I would dig. Yeah. Um, the only other, I forgot about this. Like when I was a kid, we had an author come to the school and do a reading. Um, and it was like, I'm, I'm positive. I told the story on this show before about getting, if you like memorize, like if you knew what he was reading about, you could like guess and he was going to give like a special copy of this book away. Have I told this story? I don't think so. Oh my gosh. Uh, Maybe I'll save that for a future not spoiler topic. It's like <laughs> a good. juicy one. But yeah. uh, is there any author, I mean, other than Steven Erickson? Yeah. That you would like would be top of mind that if you knew you saw it, you're like, I'm going to that period. That's a really good question. Um, I think for a long time, the author I followed most closely was Neil Stevenson of Snow Crash and Diamond Age and the Cryptonomicon fame. Uh, for the longest time, I said my favorite books were the Broke Cycle that he wrote, um, Quicksilver, System of the World, and The Confusion. Not in that order. I put them in the wrong order. Anyway, um, yeah, so I think it would be cool to 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 go to a reading that I never have. I'm sure I could have. I'm sure he probably went to L.A. while I was there, but I never paid attention to it. Um, I, I guess, is there an, another author that you would like rush out and go see? I don't know. I feel like I'm just because like I'd, I'd be willing to see so many, but somebody I'd probably like rush out to see maybe Scott Lynch mm -hmm. um, for the lies of Locke Lamora books. If yeah. They're in the tippy top of my faves. Um, and I love, I love the voices of the characters. I love that world. I'd be so interested to hear from the author's own voice. What, what it yeah. feels like, what it, what it tastes like, what it sounds like. Totally. Yeah. Well, there you go. Check out your local bookstores because this does, does happen, especially if you live in large metropolitan yeah. areas. And have um, you ever been to one that you really enjoyed? I'd love to hear people's yeah. experiences. Please let us know. Again, dlcfeedback at gmail.com. You can email us or great place is the Discord, 5 by 5 DLC on the Discord, the book club section therein. Uh, we love hearing from you. All right, let's jump in because we got a lot to dig through. These are really juicy, fun chapters. So spoilers starting now for chapters four and five of Midnight Tides by Steven Erickson. Right away, we are in uh, just an incredible, incredible chapter. Um, <laughs> I read, you know, we do our uh, sentences, our sections, our passages at the end. And... Um, I could have picked like this entire scene as a, as a passage. Uh, the, I read it out loud. After I read it, I read it out loud again to my wife. I was like, you got to hear this. Saren Pedak um, musing on uh, Banadas and Hull meeting for the first time and just being like, men. Ugh, dudes men. being Bros, bros being dudes. <laughs> man's can, world. It's they a man's can bro world. Out. They can bro out at a drop of a hat. Meanwhile, uh, me, I try to hang out with the ladies. I don't feel comfortable. I don't get it. This scene, it's like it was speaking 
to my 20 year old self. <laughs> it was resonant, deep resonance of this, this scene and the way that she talks about that experience. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, so well done. I really makes me want to be like, Stephen, who did you talk to? Who did you talk to? It's How did you research this exact so feeling? He's about everything. <laughs> He's like so insightful. It's, it's incredible. But I, I do love this notion of it's such a beautiful tangle that she finds herself in where she feels more comfortable with men. She kind of muses about how when she try, tries to hang out with, with like-minded women, because she's hung out with men so much, she doesn't feel entirely comfortable. They don't feel comfortable with her. Mm -hmm. And yet here in this one instant, this moment where it's like, yeah, I feel more comfortable with men. Oh, wait, two men interacting with each other. I'm immediately pushed out. And it's like, oh, I don't, I don't feel like I belong anywhere. Yeah. And the, the comfortability that they, it's, it's not even necessarily I perceived as her being pushed out, but their immediate level of comfortability yeah. was like, wow, the comfortability I feel is like 0% on the way to achieving that natural connection and such yeah. that she pushes herself out. She's right. like, they clearly have something. They're going to have a moment that I, they simply cannot be a part of. So right. I'll give it to them and I'll just know that I am not of them. Yeah. And it, and it takes no words for them. And it takes, it takes words for women relish the, the words and the connection that, that the bonds that those forge. Mm -hmm. It's just such a beautiful insight. Yeah. And, and really also not just a idle musing of the author. It, it, it reveals character, right? It reveals who this woman is. And I'm, Slowly, and then later on, we hear even more cool stuff about her. And I'm like, oh, Saren Pedak is is immediately one of the coolest characters. Yeah, digging her. Um, but the substance of this connection between Benatis and Hall is Hall being like, "Hey, bro, uh, I I, I want to be on the Edur side. I I, I want I'll I'll jump ship. I'm I'm trying to help you guys out. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, I, I don't even." <laughs> I, Saren's like, I don't like my own people either. I'm not a, you know, the <laughs> Lothari are a-holes. <laughs> we're, we're, we're here trying to, you know. Um, we the baddies. Be cool. Yeah. Like, we're trying to not go to war. Hull's like, no, I, I do want to go to war. Mm. Um, we also find out some really cool information about Blackwood and the Eater's yes. use of Blackwood, which is this sort of magical tree that they use to build their ships and the ships can then heal themselves. Pretty sick. And it being like a key resource or like a, a key reason why the Lethary would want to push into yeah. their lands and, and have the, I guess, the forest's worth of Blackwood at their disposal. Yeah. I think, at do we see somebody say something about their bow and shaping it and it, it having sort of a life? I think earlier in the book it was mm. hinted at, as, but I was like, oh, that must be like a magical bow. But it's like, oh, it's the trees themselves. This is like the nature of them. Well, it feels like they're sort of infused with these wraiths, you know, that they're mm. the, this wraith spirits are sort of infused in the in the trees. And and there's the, you know, the Idur's craftsmanship allows them to sort of commune with the wood itself and coax it into taking new shapes. Um, mm. But then it can heal and it can move through the water faster and it's magic resistant. Such a cool idea. Um, and we also find out, you know, um, the this notion of the Lothari like kind of going to their deaths these all these people on the ships like knowingly going going to their deaths was i think troll was like what would why would they even do this well now we know they were they all all were these indebted mm. that had this price on their head or price on their family's head and they did this they sacrificed themselves to get their family out of debt yeah pretty cool pretty cool pretty brutal pretty brutal and it you know again goes to the lothari notion of it's all about money mm -hmm. it's all about money yeah um which we see more and more of <laughs> exactly um okay and speaking of money the next chapter we're at the uh quillis canal uh, with uh bris benick bedick and uh another like just awesome 
fantasy idea of how the justice system works. Here. Yes. So like awesome fantasy idea and also <laughs> like uh, man, death by drowning got to be up there in like most horrific. Ugh. Most horrific. And they're like the drownings are on. <laughs> <laughs> the everybody come to the t- canal. The, yeah. the drownings are happening. But it's you know, that's I hangings, that's I know right? in real life we would yeah. they would and you know, there's almost more grisly to see hangings, but I love Because you could see them. Yes, exactly. Um I love it's like hey you have just as good a chance as anybody else to be free, you know? <laughs> we'll let your ability to swim with a bunch of heavy coins determine whether you were guilty or not. <laughs> and then if you make it, you keep them. Yeah. Pretty okay. enticing. Pretty Very cool. enticing. So the more, yeah, the, the, the greater the crime, the more coins you have to carry. So the greater the reward. I mean, it's a reality <laughs> show is what it is, yes. right? It's uh, a, a grim reality show. This yes. week on The Drownings. You know? <laughs> and then like, everybody around them taking bets on like disappearing, flailing, floundering. Like, I'm like, oh, what's the difference between flailing and floundering? I know. Like, I give it's... me the nuance of the bet. Is, is there like, you know, magical replays of some being like, that's a, fl- that's a flail. <laughs> no, nope, not a flounder. Let's a go to the magical replays. All yeah. right. Open your warren and let's see what we got. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna use my uh, my magical highlighter pen to. Sur- <laughs> oh, that's definitely a flailing. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, <laughs> uh. We are then introduced to, and let me say it right up front, ladies and gentlemen. There have been a lot of really great names in the Malazan Book of the Fallen. Up to this point, <laughs> I have enjoyed. Erickson's naming conventions uh, across a a number of characters. So many characters in the novels. So many great, (laughs) wonderful names. I think I have a new favorite. A new Mm. top of the heap. A new champion in the great fantasy character name category. Oobla La Pung. (laughs) Oobla La Pung is my new favorite character. Oobla La Pung might be what I name every character I play in a role-playing <laughs> video game from now on. Ubla La Pung, who uh, has committed a lot of crimes uh, and is, uh, is being uh, <laughs> weighed down by uh, just a tremendous amount of uh, heavy coins. Mm-hmm. But what no one uh, really thinks about is that uh, Ublala is half Tarthanol and therefore has four lungs. Uh and you know, the canal. What is a hundred yards across? Hundred hundred feet across? Yeah, it's not like a an unbelievable canal, right? Uh, it's just like a far distance when you're weighted down. But maybe yeah. if you just got four lungs, you take a little stroll, dude. Amazing, just coming he just out the walks other side, across richer. the bottom, just like. Mm. By the way, first walks, you know, naked, pees in the canal before jumping into it. I thought he peed back into all the people. Oh, did he pee into the people? I thought it was like a last annoyance oh, like a last to everybody. Flipping the bird everyone. Not like a, I'm going to jump into this pool that I just created. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I misread. I thought he was You might be right. I just in. assumed he wasn't like peeing into this spot. He's like, I just wanted it to be warm when I got in. <laughs> Whatever the case, uh, it is made clear that uh, the man is well endowed. Mm. And in fact, we <laughs> one of the onlookers is like, I heard there's a, I heard there's a magical way to do a little tr- uh, uh, transplant. <laughs> you can jump in there, get the body, boom, 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 zip, I, zip. I, he won't need it. He won't need it. I like that he's like, I heard that. And somebody, and then immediately his friend's like roasting him, like yeah. including like this rabble roasting each other. So I'm like, good. is this very weird foreshadowing to this happening later? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it's very weird foreshadowing to literally everyone that encounters Ubla La Pong. Being like, <laughs> dang. Oh, hey, buddy, put some clothes on. You know what? Don't. You know um, what? Give it a minute. <laughs> uh, just an incredible scene. Incredible. I love the notion of it. I love the the choreography of it. Like you said, hearing the crowd and being the, seeing the people and everybody betting and all this. And um, Garen Eberricht, the mm-hmm. fanad, is there with with uh, uh, Briss, and he bets heavy on uh, Ubla La Pung mm-hmm. um, wins because he knows about the four lung dealio. 
Um, then we have a, a quick scene of Tay Hall uh, saying, we got to hire that guy. See that Oblala Pung dude? See the guy who just walked across the bottom? Go <laughs> hire him. That's our guy. He's your bodyguard. <laughs> that guy's mm. awesome. <laughs> uh, Tay Hall just like, ha- like flitting in. And having like a, a moment and flitting out. And then Garen being like, I saw your brother, by the way. He's wearing a skirt. <laughs> I like immediately my brain being he's like, he's still just wearing the sheet. Like when he shows up and he wraps the sheet around himself, I'm like, yeah. oh, it's because the pants are being worked on. And it's like, right. no, I guess that's just the way he's going to dress. And has been. He clearly doesn't have any. It's well, like we have so- another scene of of a bug like continuing to work on the pants, and he's like, "I can't steal any more wool." He's like, "Guess I'm going with the sheet then." I know, so but I'm like sticking with sheet. What was he doing before we met him? <laughs> I know. Always the sheet. Nothing. I just I love how little f's Tehal gives. You know, uh, just his complete lack of f's to give. Life goals. You know? Life goals. So Confidence. Good. Brains. No shame. So good. Mm. So good. Um, then we have this awesome, another awesome scene. Literally every scene in chapter four, I'm like, this is the coolest scene. Chapter four is, again, top to bottom, baller. Mm. So this scene uh, is a little, uh, little seafood restaurant meeting, little, uh, little, little lunch date between uh, Briss and Finad Garen Eberricht. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're uh, sharing drinks of seal sperm. Mm. You know, delicious. Mm. And, or at least it's not all seal sperm. There's, it just spiked with that. You know, there's other stuff in there. <laughs> Are they both having it? No, I, I think only uh, Garen. Garen. Yeah. Yeah. And at one point, uh, what's his face? Uh, Briss is like, I haven't seen anybody drink that other than like macho dudes. Yeah. Never seen a woman drink that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so we get Garen Eberich's backstory, which is extremely cool. Very cool. And, and, and I don't want to jump ahead, but it's awesome that it's cool enough here. And yeah. then it gets more cool later, which we'll get to. But Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Just just an incredibly awesome backstory. So he's like, he, uh, you know, Briss is the king's champion, but Garen, like, it, interesting how we got it revealed that the qu- the queen or whatever was like, you got to get Garen back here. And he's like, no, 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 no. He's has his, his special place. And you assume he's just like a really great soldier, but it's like, no, yeah. he was like, coming home one night after being out gambling or out at the bars or whatever. And when he gets to the King's the back to the palace, he finds that there are guards outside who have their lungs been sorcerously filled with sand and they've choked and their bodies are still warm. And so he's like, Oh my gosh, the King is being assassinated. He rushes in and he is able to do away with the King's assassinators. But as like, he like, kills the sorcerer to like protect himself from the most from that but then in his fight with the remaining assassin he the assassin goes to chop him but he leans back such that it like he's able to deflect this this um sword's blow but instead of actually def- like truly deflecting it it pierces through his face instead of his oh, it doesn't deflect it he dodges so it doesn't hit his brain it hits his mouth pushes between his teeth such that his teeth all wrench outwards, but stop the blade ultimately. So he's a vertical slice through his lips and gaps in his teeth where the, the blade stops short. He that literally makes him... stopped a sword cut with his teeth. Oh my gosh. And then now he like has a telltale like he, spooky he whistle. Talk- yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Whistle. I probably my my I'm sure my mic <laughs> eliminated that. But it yeah. didn't. It got it. Oh. So, so so sweet. Yeah, I love the uh, I love this dude's backstory. So killer. And because of that, and the king's like, huh, what? He wakes up, he's like, You stopped people from murdering me? Anything You're hired. you want. Yeah. Anything yeah. you want. You get a free pass, hall pass, forever. Kings uh. leave. Do what you want above the law, free from prosecution. And Garen becomes the Batman. He's the Batman. <laughs> well, it's like, you know, I think it's revealed, like revealed in this conversation that he like is 
the city is like fearful of him yeah. because he's like he's the Batman. He's like striking. He's like getting vengeance against people. Like he's trying yeah. to find these assassins. I guess he's more the, the Punisher than the than the Batman. But yes. uh, I like the idea. He's the vigilante. He's got a list of people that have done him wrong, and yeah, he's systematically murdering them without consequences yeah but he you know if he's the batman he's he's walking around town in the outfit all day he's pulling the hood off he's like yeah it's me yeah you know it's yeah, like uh right. it's a uh, it's great and that makes you be like "Ooh, that's rough that's like what a, what choice is to be made on the king's leave but at the end of the meal because briss sort of loses his appetite because of the things that they discuss he asks Briss to like make sure that he gives his food to somebody who's starving in the alley. Yeah. So he has like this glimmer of like not like not fully sinister. It seems like a nice but intense dude. I don't know cuz he also goes make sure to tell him it's from me. Like I assume I assume something there. I agree. There's there's that there's, there's a that- relationship. There's a feeling of, hey, take your leftovers, give them to somebody that needs it more than you, but also make sure you tell them it was my idea, you know? So it's not, but did know, you not Did you feel altruistic. that way? Did you feel that way as soon as you read it? Because I was like, uh, my assumption when I read it, I see what, how your read is now, but when I read that, I assumed it was because he had like a previous relationship and maybe the person in the alley would be untrusting. And so if you came out and you said, hey, this is from Garen, they'd be like, oh, that person has been taking care of me. So it's okay. I can accept this. Interesting. I did not read it that way. I read it. It was, it was like, do something you nice, t- but make sure people know from. I did it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Um, the substance of what they're talking about, by the way, that you said is so uncomfortable is basically Garen saying, I'm going to kill your brother. Yes. Uh, I want to kill Hull. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. He's not Incredibly on my list Incredibly awesome yet. dialogue. The, the, the like tete a tete of, hey, maybe I, are you, am I on your list? Not yet. Ah, I gotcha. <laughs> I don't know. Like this guy. But don't cross me. <laughs> dude. I will the, kill you. <laughs> the guy with the hall pass, the guy who's just like, I can do whatever I want. Nothing you can do about it. Mm-hmm. Just like incredible. Mm-hmm. Incredible. Very, very like edgy feeling. Yeah. You know? Yes. Reading it because he's like an amiable feeling guy. Right. Yeah, it's uh, it's like a great characterization. And he's so self aware. He's like, yeah, I get it. They want me out of town because I'm a, I'm a, I'm scary, and everybody's terrified of me. So they mm-hmm. want me out of town. I get it. I'll, I, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'll go with the, you know, with the, uh, the group out out of town because, uh, yeah, I, I make people Why uncomfortable because yeah. I might kill any of them at any time. <laughs> it's awesome. It's so awesome. Uh, I might kill any of them at any time. And honestly, I love that about me. <laughs> yeah. Also, so they, so hey, I, you know, your brother Hall might be on my list, kind of on my list. Well, what about my brother Tay Hall? Well, I actually admire that guy. Mm-hmm. I actually admire that guy because he's as ruthless as me. And Briss is like, what are you talking about? He's a complete dum dum. Yeah. He's a, he's a, he's a waste <laughs> of space. He's just sitting around doing nothing. He's like, ah, 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 not doing nothing. In fact, you think I murdered a bunch of people? He murdered a bunch of people. What do you mean he murdered a bunch of people? Yeah, he got them all to commit suicide because he stole all their money. Brilliant. Yeah. 4D chess. Mm-hmm. Loved it. Loved the like, I admire that guy. I, I get where he's coming from. And he is even more dangerous because his machinations are, are subtle. Yes. And secondhand. Less obvious, less overt. I, how quickly I immediately. Like instantly, I'm like rooting for Tay Hall. I'm like, ah, oh, don't give up the game, Garen. Yeah. Stop, 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 stop. stop. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Um, just in an awesome, awesome scene. He like collapsed the entire stock market. Basically, is what we find he out. Collapsed with the Hall. economy, and so yeah. people just, who he made a he made basically, um, what, what you know, what do they call the stock market crash in the in the twenties? The, um. There's a name for it. Anyway, the, yeah. he basically made that that thing happen where people started committing suicide because they were destitute. They lost everything. Yeah. Incredible. All right. So back to Tay Hall. Uh, he's, he and Bug are like hiring all these 
malcontents to be part of their crew. Um, Mm -hmm. And he notices that his brother, uh, Briss, uh, met with Garen Eberich, and he reveals the next bit of Garen Eberich's backstory, which makes it even cooler, which is like, oh, no, he's not the Batman. He's the friggin' Joker. It's so incredible to have him work through it and being like, oh my gosh, this happened. But like immediately being like, well, that's pretty sus. Like, what do you mean their lungs were filled with sand? That's like the highest level sorcery. And how interesting that this sorcerer who was apparently part of this troop, who's never shown that kind of skill before, is suddenly able to do it. And how interesting that there's no other people, all anybody who might have been related to this, who could have been tortured for testifying for why did they do this? Who is really after this? All of them just happened to be dead. And really, he just happened to be there? No, it is coincidence, coincidence, coincidence. Uh, Garen hired these people. Yeah. And then the reason that they were so surprised as he came in is because he's like, what's up y'all? And then killed the people he hired to kill the King so that he could kill them so that he could get whatever he wanted is like a mastermind plan to get, to get the King's leave, to get himself into this status position to be uh, ruthless and unstoppable. Yeah. I mean, two things I want to say about this. One is Erickson's, always like got two layers there's always a secondary scheme there's always these feints these and it the the that is cool it's it's cool enough that he that he got the king's leave that he's that he's got this sort of batman backstory that that is already cool but to then add the second layer of oh it was all a setup it was all to a brilliant diabolical scheme just next level, completely next level. Incredible. And, and awesome. And the, then the other thing is, I love how Tehal, he doesn't just put it together. He follows the money. Mm-hmm. Like the reason oh, yes, yes, the yes. King's investigators didn't figure it out and he did is he followed the money. Mm-hmm. He's like, okay, there's a bunch of people related to all the people that died that started spending a lot of money right around that time. Why would that be the case? Why would they have a bunch of money all of a sudden? They're dead. Oh, they got paid off. He comes in. He paid them. He comes in. They don't think he's going to kill him. He does. It goes crazy wrong. He gets stabbed in the face because they're like, what's this guy trying to kill us? It's the perfect cover because he Mm -hmm. actually got injured. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's like the other thing it's like it's not like he came out of it completely like scratch free he has like this large visible wound on his face like forever marred from this experience to be like look it defending the king yeah yeah so brilliant so fun so cool that tayhall figured it out and garen figured out tayhall and they're both it is it is like arch nemeses you know they're like working against each other they know they recognize who the most potent threat is on the other side of the line you know it's Mm -hmm. like yeah 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 get it get it they're they're, we're i i see they're on a collision course you know yes very cool all right um so uh then tail's like hey bug um we need to set up Garen. We need to take him down. And I know how to do it. We're going to, uh, he's, got, he's got contingencies against every form of threat. He even has his own water supply. The guy doesn't even drink anybody else's water. He's so terrified of being- Prepper. Yeah, total prepper. <laughs> so how are we going to take him down? Well, we are going to- uh, fake a suicide uh, of this guy, Turbal. And how we're going to do that? Well, we're going to get... And Turbal was holding his coins. Right. He was the guy he he placed his bet with. Yes. uh, At the scene where the 
four lunged guy, Ublala, made it pung. across. Ublala Pung. Such a great name. <laughs> uh, so they're going to do something terrible. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Tip my hat. Uh, and they're going to take Turbo's blood and pump it into uh, somebody else's body. So no shortage of those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. True. And we find that out later too. And uh, yeah. that's because, uh, you know, there's like magic CSI, you know, the magic CSI team <laughs> that can like check the blood, you know? They've got a, it's not, it's not a matter of like true forensics. It's just the blood don't lie. Blood don't lie. Ma mm -hmm. Magicians are like, yep, yep. A plus B equals C. Mm -hmm. Here we are. Magicians. <laughs> I love thinking of them as magicians, not sorcerers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're like, uh, and the, is this your card? You know, uh, um, it's cut in half. Uh, <laughs> I didn't do that. It's not part of the trick. That was what the crime actually. <laughs> Uh, and I love how Bugs like, oh yeah, that's that's awful, awful, terrible work. And and <laughs> Tails like, yeah, I'm so glad you're up for it. <laughs> <laughs> the number of times that Tails like uh, keeping Bug busy, yeah. my chore, my <laughs> like, greatest chore is takes giving a lot that of work man to work keep to that do. Dude busy. <laughs> it's just awesome. It's just awesome. I mean, I'm just so in love with these characters. Mm. Um, and then he's like, hey, we're gonna need a thief. We're going to need a thief. The, the thing we need most is if we're going to steal Garen's money, we're going to need a good thief. Cut <laughs> two. Zambies. <laughs> the coolest Zambies. The coolest thief ever. Uh. Now I'm calling her Shirk Alali. How are you pronouncing it? Yes. Alali. Okay. I yeah. like that. Because I think Shirk Alali rolls off the tongue. Shirk has her own badass backstory she uh she argued with her landlord who stole money from her came into her apartment and literally took her money got pissed at him threw him out the window all within her rights all that's fine totally fine because murder it's about the, the money murder the landlord go on he <laughs> took your money you get to murder him unfortunately <laughs> threw him out the window he landed on an innocent bystander and they both died <laughs> Now you're in trouble. Yeah, you killed the innocent. That's not okay. Some you can't kill gold. someone while, while killing someone. That's not allowed. <laughs> uh, and so she does her walk with the coins in the canal. Yeah. Sinks and definitely dies, but doesn't die because it turns out at some point in her life she was cursed. I think maybe cursed by that landlord, cursed by somebody previously because she was a thief. Yeah, I think we know thief. who she was cursed by. I think it's kind of a little bit of a mystery who she was. But she murdered the per person that cursed her later. Yes. But yes. Uh, but before that, I want to get – There's. There, I mean, I know there's – we don't need to – we're spending all these time on these details. But I just love all these details. Do it. The, I love her like uh, – she had to, she had to uh, walk across the canal. It's okay. She's a woman. She had. She gets half the coin. It wasn't that much coin. She could have made it. Oh, but there's scary fish that want to murder people in the oh, thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But they don't, they don't eat women. She would have been fine. Oh, but the fish grabbed the line and it caught. And it just, it's like this wonderful, like she would have been okay. No, she wasn't. But she would have been. But she didn't. But it she was. She could have been. But no. Yes. I forgot about the fish. <laughs> it's, it's so good. Yeah. It's so good. And, and it just dragged her under. The fish wasn't trying to eat her. It literally just caught on its fin the rope that they use to hoist the corpses back up to the surface. <laughs> and then caught the on end, the fin. And then even at the end, it's like, uh, and, but she died. But did she die? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. not really. Not she's, completely. <laughs> she's fine-ish. She looks pretty bad now, and nobody wants to talk to her or hire her or work with her ever or again. Or sleep with her. <laughs> or sleep with her. Ugh. The worst part. That's the worst part. I um, like how she like literally like sits behind the bordello the and just yeah. listens to people have sex. Like, <laughs> I miss <sighs> those days. <laughs> Someday. <laughs> it's like, I want to be where the people hump. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, and so this is the, but when she was alive, apparently she was a known and excellent thief. And now she's basically fallen from everybody's notice because they're like, gross. <laughs> There's, yeah, there's, yeah. everybody's like oh yeah the zombie yeah she's over <laughs> yeah. there <laughs> I don't, yeah i just like not talking about the zombie uh 
But Bug is like, hey, uh, Tejo wants to talk to you. Come come down to the house. Come over to that. Come over to the rooftop and we'll. we'll... <laughs> I like that Tejo's kind of like, uh, <laughs> you know, what's the equivalent of like uh, Anne and the rest of development? They're like, yeah. this guy wants to hire you. And she's like, for what? Who? Yeah, is it him? Him? The guy on the the guy on the roof? Him? <laughs> okay, well, I'll be there for fifteen minutes tops. Uh. <laughs> Everyone thinks he's a complete goober. And yeah, it's like mm. that guy. I mean, I guess <laughs> I'll go- see what he wants to say, but him? It's so good. <laughs> um, then we have a, a, a quick scene with the, our three lady friends, Shandra, Sara, and Hajin. Uh, and Tail's like, okay, I got your new bodyguard. Here he is. <laughs> Ulala Punk comes in naked still. Well, first of all, they're all like, we don't need a bodyguard. What's wrong with you, man? And he's like, no, <laughs> it's important. He shows up naked and all of them are like. Yes. Yes, we will have just, him as our bodyguard. We will have him as well, the guard. Punk's as the guard, like, as the guard. don't leave me with them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so funny because he comes in and he's like, oh, women are here. Like, we know what your life's been. We know what your life's been. We get it. Yeah. Maybe if you wore some tighter clothes. <laughs> he's he's or Magic loosen. Mike. <laughs> yeah. He's Magic uh, Mike. Um, and they're like, <laughs> they're all like, uh, <laughs> does he have a brother? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. You get a couple uh, more of these? I'll take, so I'll take good. some more for the house. <laughs> <laughs> on, on whole round. Um, okay, so then we are introduced to uh, another new character, uh, the king's first concubine, Nisal, who uh, seems like a sharp cookie herself, and is uh, kind of uh, scheming with Preda Unital Hibaz. Briss comes in. The two of them are talking about Garen, and they're like, "This Garen guy is going to be a problem." I thought this was interesting because they set up the concubine specifically being like the concubine doesn't really have any power. The concubine is just the concubine. They're there for their purpose. The only power that they have is the power of their personality. And if they can basically assert themselves to have power, they kind of do. And then I was like, oh, interesting. I wonder what she will be. She has asserted her power. Very like knowing like. Like seeing that like very formal interaction between the Prada and the Queen and Briss that and sort of that initial scene where we we meet those you know, those characters. Yeah. There was like a formality and like speaking at a turn, et cetera, et cetera, and having the concubine being like, she doesn't really have any power, be like, let me tell you what's up was yeah. like a very it, it put quite in 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 sharp detail the type of person that she is and, and what she is bringing to the energies in the room, which I really enjoyed. Yeah. Agreed. And she, my reading was that she is firmly on team King. Like she's yes. there to protect the King and hates the queen who is scheming and kind of, or no, you disagree? No, I agree. But I, I, you just reminded me of the question. What is, what's the dynamics here? We got the King and a queen and a prince. And in like a standard fantasy world, you got king, yeah. queen, prince, they're married, that's their boy. Yeah. But this is like king, v, queen, and prince, and concubine, like, that's my man. Right. No, I think you're I think you're right about that. I think the queen is fully uh fully there to make prince uh Qu- ascend to or the whatever. throne and is, have as much power as possible. Is the queen married to the king? I think so. Is it, or is it like a queen of a different zone? No, my, I mean, I could be wrong, but my reading is that she, they are the king and queen and yeah. they have the son, but the, the queen is, is, you know, Lady Macbeth, right? She's, yes. she's, she's got her own schemes and, and plans and she's, uh, nobody likes the prince. He's a jag off. Is it her kid? Is it their kid? I think it's their kid, but I think the king has no intention of relinquishing power. But they mm-hmm. later on in this cha- in this chapter, they talk about how, or maybe it's the next chapter, they talk about how, in contrast to Hanan Mosog, the king of the Lethari, uh, Lethari is not does not have absolute power. Yeah, like, 
there's people that are trying to undermine his power at all at all mm. turns. Whereas over here in the Edur lands, we all respect the warlock king, and he has that, abs- what it. he says goes, and that's it. Yeah. So I think that there's it's it's more like, you know, the the mantle uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. You know, mm-hmm. classic. Uh, the mantle of king is fragile in that everybody is is Vying groping at it, that. you know grasping at power and trying to undermine his power and yeah. chief among them is his own wife who despises him and wants you know wants him out of there so that her son can have the power so she can really have the power yeah it's interesting to hear it. so much of like talking about them around them like starting from here versus starting with like if we walk into the throne room and they appear together first that's like a very different vibe than like yeah as it is, it's like, I can't imagine those two being in the same room together, such to the point that I'm like, is she like right. the queen, though? It's it's very interestingly written. Sorry. But concubine, no, I... not t- fully team king, despise a queen, wants to protect, etc. Yeah. And so they know that Garen wants to kill Baruch. They know that Baruch is following the queen's instructions, which they don't like. And they are, and, and is trying to lead to war, trying to start a war between the Idur and the Lothari, and that Baruch is not comfortable. That's why he's been drinking and having a anxiety attacks is because he knows he's going to start war, but he's just following orders. Yeah. And they're like, that's fine. Baruch can go. <laughs> and Briss is like, mm, that's uncomfortable <laughs> to be like them talking about human life so flippantly. Right. Yes. No, I love that too. They're, they're, they're playing the game, the chessboard, and people are just pawns. And he's like, I don't know if I'm comfortable with this. There's a very interesting dynamic between the Lethary and the Idur, the story of, of brothers of a single family. For sure. Sort of being in and around. The mirroring Meanwhile, of those things, yes. And, and in both cases, like these women having their own schemes and plots. It's like very mirrored on both sides. We have Prada and the concubine working uh, for the king who we've not met yet. Right. Um, and then like the women sorcerers of the Idura tribes. Fascinating. Yeah. Fascinating. I know. I, I, I love it so much. And it's, it's so such a different, it's such a departure from what we've had in the previous novels. It just feels like we're in a completely different dynamic that is so much fun. Not not better. Uh, it's just so cool that we have room for this in this series as well to be almost like a more traditional fantasy tale in, in a lot of ways. Yeah. You know? Oh, I, I I like that. It's like you know we've seen a lot of like the war games, like in yeah. the war. This is like how do we get to that point? Right. Yeah. And we've that- been in the foot soldiers in the in the <laughs> trenches in the you know down in the muck, and here we and and most of you know these sort of fantasy tales often are having the the people pulling the strings and I love that we're now getting some of that too. Mm-hmm. It's cool. Mhm. All right, so back to Tehal's rooftop where uh Shirk does show up um and uh Tehal's like, "Hey, I need you to do some thieving for me. You're you're, you're a sweet, sick, awesome rad thief. <laughs> let's do some let's do some thieving." And she's like, "Well, what do you give me?" What do you give me? He's like, well, what do you want? I can make, try to make you pretty again. I could, or not pretty, but like- Make you alive again. again. Yeah. You want to be alive? You want to be, what do you want? What do you want? And uh, (laughs) she's like, I want to have some sex. (laughs) She's like, I want to, she, it's interesting that she's like, sort of embrace the fact that she's like, I don't want to not be dead. That's like a cool benefit to this curse, but I want to look alive and- and boy, I want to feel alive <laughs> if you catch my drift. Yeah. Um, I love that she's like, and even at some point he says something like, we're going to make sure that, you know, you have this. And she's like, I just want to smell that way. Yeah, right. Uh, I really, yeah. uh, an interesting, interesting, you know, form of Motivation. payment. Yeah, yeah. so cool. And they also talk about this, uh, well, before actually she even gets there, Oh yeah, yeah. They talk. Yeah. Tehal and Bug talk about how they have. What are the options for our, for our awesome uh, assassins? Well, there's there's different people that have been cursed. Who are the cursed people? Well, there's <laughs> that one well, one lady that uh, was cursed by her husband that she cheated on. Uh, there's that ten year old girl. That's a weird one. 
It stayed and 10 that, forever because she got cursed. And they're like, ah, we'll circle back to that. <laughs> circle back, circle back, circle back. Um, so basically, Tail says, hey, Shirk, I want you to steal Garen Eberich's money. And we just, I don't even want it. I don't even care about it. Just dump it in the river. All as long as he doesn't have it. Mm-hmm. She's like, all right, all right. You, you crazy, Tail. I like it. Uh, and she's like, oh. I hear Bugs making a weird noise. Somebody else is coming. Get out of here. She climbs down the wall. Well, I thought she climbed down the wall first and then and then afterwards. Oh, yeah. So she climbed down the wall first. And what I liked about it, she like climbs down the wall, which is like her choice. But I love Tay Hall like watching and being like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then waiting until she was far enough away to be like, like I know, roll her. Yeah. Like <laughs> just like uh, such a this good, one. <laughs> good moment for him to be like, Waited, waited until it was far enough away. Hilarious. And then Bug being like, oh, hello, downstairs to somebody <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> loud enough just in case that girl was still there. And then sure enough, Briss has shown up to say yeah. what's up to Tay Hall uh, after his meeting with Garen. And I, I guess like my, like obviously being like, Garen thinks you're not an idiot. And I just came <laughs> yeah. over to see. <laughs> That's so true. It's like, <laughs> I've been thinking you're a complete disaster. And this guy actually thinks that you've got your shit together. But What's you're the like real story here? His greatest rival. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, what's actually going on? And they talk about their parents. Evidently, mom was brilliant with money, just like Tay Hall is. Mm-hmm. Dad was brilliant with swords, just like Briss is. And father kind of got uh in money troubles yeah and evidently offed himself yeah as a result mom could have saved him didn't because she was too concerned with the kids was too preoccupied with the kids mm-hmm. and bruce is like well how are we not like them he's like well first of all i don't have any kids <laughs> smart <laughs> tehal good smart always <laughs> and, and uh hall he doesn't care about money at all he walked away he walks mm-hmm. away he walked away from everything he he, did, he shunned money to save people. And you, you can't ever fall into debt. You're the king's champion. King loves you. You're awesome. Mm-hmm. No problems. And, uh, but they talk about uh, Garen and, um, and they think that Garen is trying to kill their brother Hull. Mm-hmm. And Briss is like, well, maybe I'll just, murder garen's underlings they're chasing me they're, they're like i think there's a guy following Did you get followed here he's like you know what come to think of it i think i was followed <laughs> yeah it was uh i you know he it, bris comes almost like in a way that's like oh, i have to talk to my idiot, idiot brother trying to suss him out are you actually not an idiot the whole thing dredges up these feelings they have sort of like this you know, mini therapy about their lives yeah. and where they've been and where they are now. And then coming out of it with him being like, mm, you are more than I thought you were. That probably means you're in danger, but Hull's definitely in danger. And we as like mom and dad, should we, could we, will we do anything about it was sort of like the yeah. the, the tension that I feel like was left. But then Tay Hall revealing even more of his, you know, big brainedness being like, okay, well, were you followed here? There's only one spot that somebody would like hide in in order to yeah. get you. Uh, and he's like, okay, well, how am I supposed to walk out that door? And he's like, oh, sorry, you could use the tunnel. And he's like, you have tunnels. <laughs> and I think yeah. that's the moment that yeah. he's like, bug ugh, always needs work to do. <laughs> yeah. I just had the guy bore out a tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> It was a Tuesday. He was bored. So mm-hmm. I had him bore. You know what and I mean? So I gave him months and months and months of work <laughs> other than his many other tasks. Yeah. So good. So Briss uh, goes to down to murder the person following him, finds out already murdered, can't murder something that's already been murdered, sees a giant pool of blood and uh, little kid footprints walking away. Cool. I, I like that he's like, I'm going to follow it. And then he's like, you know, nah. <laughs> Yeah. There's like a side of this city that as King's champion, it is not for me to know about. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't care to. It yeah. is only more dangerous for me to be involved in whatever CD things happen at night through the city. So job's done. Yeah. Back to the palace. Commissioner Gordon doesn't need to know about yeah. what the Batman is up to. <laughs> yeah. 
Exactly. Uh, so then we cut to near the Azath Tower. Ooh. Ooh. This crazy, creepy, disturbed land. Yeah, it's zomb- Zombie Town. Zombieville. Uh, I liked this cut. There's like the their lightness that is through this chapter so far sort of carries because we're with like this little girl and this funny relationship between her and uh what's her name S- S- the zambi lady oh uh shirk shirk there's like this lightness there because she's like why don't you be my mom mm. yeah like sweetness but it's like very spooky and oh it's like super a, spooky and a great like deep spookiness with like the you know chiming little girly ness sort of on top of it and then we swing yeah. right out of it again on the other side um yeah but uh the details of of this is off tower bring us bring us through them because i will just be like snapping my fingers for details oh yeah the, i mean i i love that we've we've already got in the series we've already gotten like little kids who have the wisdom of adults, you know, that, mm-hmm. that, it, and I thought, are we going to get another, she's been a kid forever, but has she, is she, you know, because she's been a kid for so long, does she have an adult's intellect inside a child's body? No, no. She's just a perpetually 10 year old girl. Yeah. Who's gotten real dark, puts literal blood in her hair. Cause she likes how it keeps the strands of hair of out face. of her eyes. Oh my gosh. It's like a good hair product, you know? Yeah. It's uh plasma <laughs> by Bausch and Lomb. <laughs> Johnson and Johnson. Bouchelaine, I should say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's really and, good. <laughs> and uh yeah, I, I agree. This was super creepy. And I love how Shirk is like, ugh, I don't want to be your mom. I love yeah. I love how their dynamic is so like doesn't it it doesn't um it, admit how creepy it is like their their dynamic is 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 not acknowledging the level of just bizarre creepiness that's on the, on the bizarre st- creepiness and also like such an inhuman everything about it is so inhuman yeah but like there is like that I roll I'm not gonna be your mom shut up stop asking yeah. there's like a an immaturity about it. But meanwhile, she's like, I killed that guy. Yeah. Uh, I, so how I, many people have you killed? Oh, lots. All the time? Wh- wh- why? It's like, all right, I'll let, here's the thing. I'll tell you who to kill. She's like, you will? Yeah, don't worry. There's still going to be lots. lots of people to she's kill. Like, Yay. <laughs> but even as she walks up, she's like, got the body that she took of the, the assassin who was following yeah. Briss, like shoving it into the wall. And she's like, the wall needs it. And, 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 uh, Forgot her name immediately. The zombie girls. So, uh, Kettle. Oh, oh no, Shirk and Kettle. Shirk, yeah. Shirk, Shirk, Shirk. Yeah, Shirk is like Shirk oh, Lolly. Wall eats people. Good to know. Good to know for like hiding her own bodies in the future. Yeah. But everything that Kettle says is like the Azoth Wall is dying, and them talking about the bodies that are beneath them, many yeah. of which are alive and have gone insane because they're just trapped beneath the earth, many yeah. of which are cowered within themselves, and distinctly five of which that is like bad energy. Real dark bad juju. Energy, yeah. And they're talking. They are the ones who are like, I will kill you when I'm out of here. Just wait. You're gonna release me, and because you're not releasing me, that's it for you. You are on like, like, and the imagining these voices saying this to this little girl. There's a tension there. Oh yeah. And you know, when I picture Azoth Wall, you know, in Dead House Gates, we walked through Azoth House walls, yeah. and we know all different creatures from all different eras. And so her saying it's a these prison, walls are right? di- it, yeah. 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 They're saying these walls are dying. I'm like, that is not a good. Right. That yes. is a and when bad you defeat situation. It, I need to feed it bodies to put off its death. It, that's the only thing that that is staving off the release of everything that's inside there is literally stuffing more bodies into it. Yeah. It's and there's also this interesting interaction where she says, where Shirk says, okay, Kettle, here's what you should do. Talk to as many of them as you can. The ones that don't want anything from you, Talk those are more. the ones you can trust. Yeah. Those like those are the ones that can be your mommy. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Super creepy. Loved it. Loved it too. And um, I also love the building of Shirk saying, you know, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to tell you who to kill. Lots of bodies. But I'm not telling you because I'm your ma. I'm telling you right. because I'm your comrade. And she's yeah. like, I accept that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Totally. So then we get a, a scene f- literally like from the perspective of the Azath Tower itself. And it is, it knows its death is coming. And it's worried because there's a five Toblakai that won out. Ooh. Uh, and I assume this is Karsa beginning of chain uh, of of House of Chains and not the end. Rut row. Rut row. Rut row. Rut row. Okay. Chapter five. That was chapter four. We did an hour <laughs> on chapter four. But chapter four is so good. It's so I think chapter five good. also good, but chapter four was spectacular. Spect- yeah, agreed. Peak, peak yeah. storytelling. Chapter five, Udinas. Udinas on the beach, just by himself on the beach doing his nets. Oh, uh, I love this too, though. <laughs> speaking to the creepy voices in his head. Who uh, I like how the, the voices are like, I'm going to rhyme, 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 rhyme. And he's like, stop rhyming. He's like, okay, I won't rhyme anymore. <laughs> but uh, it, Sorry. Go ahead. I was just like, calls itself Wither. But it's Wither. not the voice in its head. It's like a shadow wraith. I love this, mis- like, yo, you, you know I love a mischievous little character with, like, a goblin-y kind of energy. Yeah. Wither is immediately that. He is, it's like the middle of the day. He's found one little crack of shadow by a rock <laughs> that the voice like, is emanating yeah, out of. I'm down here. It's like, oh. I, like I, I could be your buddy. <laughs> like, <laughs> and you know, like, we just saw all of these raids plus one giant mysterious wraith, like slaughter 19 boats worth of people. And he's like, yeah. hey, little friend, hello, <laughs> bring your shadow over here. Let me live in it. It's like such a funny little turn to this mischievous little friend. And I just, I just yeah. love, I love, I love with it. And we it's also just- find out not just a wraith. In fact, all the wraiths are dead to stand mm. Cool. These are, yeah, these are all the people that we saw in the prologue. Uh, at the end of the war that gets slaughtered by the Tisti Dur because of the betrayal. Scamandari's betrayal. Yeah. And then we get confirmation. I, I mean, extra confirmation. We talked with, you know, the betrayer who we found out was uh, uh, Silkis. Sil- Silkis Ruin. Yeah. Uh, and so you're like, okay, I guess the implication is that they just lied. They j- And then... He- the this wither now is like, yeah, they said it yeah. was wrong. It's the other way around. Yeah, they literally said the opposite. <laughs> In case of you what didn't happened. catch that, Udinas was like, but wait, he's he's the betrayer. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They lied. <laughs> yeah, uh, obviously, he's I'm like, dead. How now do you help know? Me find my Guess toys. what? They're alive. I'm dead. Who betrayed who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And he's like, bring me your shadow and we will find my toys. Uh, yeah. Uh, that was and- interesting. He's like, go find it, find something. Where is it? Closer, hotter, warmer, warmer, cold, 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 dig, warm, dig, warm, dig, hot, left. Dig. There it is. <laughs> he's like, what is this? The arrowhead. And he says, you have to like, it's been like, you know, buried washing around, like gaining silt like this crust and he does he say something like you have to like reveal what's inside of it yeah but that he's it, like it would if it was a normal arrowhead that was millennia old it would, it would have, dissolved. have dissolved but it's special super magical awesome mm-hmm. so you want i want you to resurrect it yes what does I that mean i don't know i don't know and unas is like not today wither yeah mm. uh so then we're back to uh Saren Pedak. And uh, they let Hul- they let uh, Benadas. By the way, I was confused. So the whole first part of this novel, I was confusing the Benedda corpse with Benadas. <laughs> yeah, I I was so confused. I was like, wait, Benadas is here? I thought it was a corpse, and it was like, no, that's Benedda, Bene- yeah. not Benadas. <laughs> like, oh, come on, come Steven. on, Steven. Steven. Help me out, Steven. <laughs> Help me out, Steven. Please. Uh, uh, anyway, so Bananas is like, okay, I got to go. There's a funeral happening. I got I to gotta be at this funeral. I got to make it. Got to go. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
we get some more awesome backstory about uh, Saren, who I just love, where she's like, yeah, I'm uh, my, the, the school I went to, they keep records of like the students that have done the most things. And I'm in there. I did the most punishment. I got the most I, punishments. <laughs> I did the most bad things. I did the most <laughs> worst. I did the most On worst. the record, baby. Yeah. I'm at the top of the leaderboards. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. Um, and uh, they have this cool interaction where she's like, you're going to be, you know, y- 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 you're going to, y- you know, you're going to use the eater as a sword, but you're going to be the one swinging the sword. He's like, no, 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 no. I'm the sword. I'm the sword. She's like, explain how that, what does that work? Yeah. 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 I, I'm curious too. How's that going to work? Like Hull has plans. Mm-hmm. Hull has plans. Um, And then all of a sudden, Silt just ruined shows up. <laughs> The ghost of Silchus. Mm-hmm. It's like, hello. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and Buruk's like, oh, it's just like the tiles said. That's literally never had. I did not expect the tiles to actually be right. Uh, which I thought was a wonderful detail of like, everybody divines the tiles. But this dude's like, they're never, not even, that's, that's hokum. It's not right. Yeah. Well, I like the ideas that like, even like these things that we have seen through people who are like the believers of the tiles. It makes sense that there are people in this world. It's like, Oh, look, I threw tiles. Oh, the tiles. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I yeah. know. It's so great that people that, that don't even buy into it. They're like, man, tiles. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but still just is like, ah, ah, you see this road you're walking on a dragon made it. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, wow. Cool. Okay, cool. Anything this- else you want to add? Rats. <laughs> Mice. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Mice, not rats. Yeah. Important distinction. Uh, these it's are all like the you... souls of everybody that was murdered. Anyway, like... have a good day. Bye. I know. He like appears to be like, and here's the lore. <laughs> <C'est fair." laughs> <Meh. laughs> I just, uh, nothing really important to say. Just. Anyway, carry on. Go on. Carry on. Carry on. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and Saren's like, oh, I can't wait for this all to be over. Two more days. <laughs> Two more days. Two more days. Two but more days. the important thing is Brooke's like, oh, all the holds are waking up. And that means that the seventh closure, which is this big prophecy, is happening soon. Yeah. Big deal. Which is how we know that the first emperor is going to be reborn. Yeah. Big deal. All right. Back to Troll. He, uh, you know, they're, they're having this, um, this big funeral pyre. Um, he, uh, he sees a bunch of people carrying weapons. Everybody's getting ready for war. He sees his brothers, his brother fear is, is going to lead people in war. He's the weapons master. He's going to be the war master. Mm-hmm. He's, you know, getting worried about what's, what's coming down the pike. They're going to have uh, dinner. Udnas, I had to take a nap before I have to serve dinner to those people. <laughs> dream, crazy dream, crazy dream. Dream question mark? Yeah, dream question mark. Vision? Tra- tele- teleportation? Yeah. Uh, well, I think it's a, I think it's a vision or a, or, a, or a dream in that it is, it goes back in time. So maybe it's time travel. But he goes back to witness the thing that we all, we witnessed in the prologue, right? Yes. He's seeing the thing that what happens right before the betrayal. Mm-hmm. He sees the Kachinchamale corpses. He sees a forkrel assail. Mm-hmm. The big crazy multi limb jointed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's like, hey, Wither, what's going on? Wither's not there. Then uh, he sees child size footprints, which I was like, is that kettle or is that yeah. a different child? I assume it's gotta be. I assume that it's Kettle. I don't know. I don't know if that's an assumption we can make because I feel like just the time doesn't. I don't know. She's been it's around only a long because time. She's been around a long time. I felt like this was like a reveal of how long she's been around. Perhaps. To me. Yeah. Um, I could be wrong, obviously, but uh, that's what I liked to think. But I also I think you might be right. He's in this room. It's so cold. He feels like, you know, the. The fear that he has for this four curl of sail, like sitting in this chair, and then it's like, oh, it's just a corpse as well, right? Uh, which is like an 
Yeah, interesting it's, it's, reveal. I was like, brain oh my had god, been eaten. Yeah. yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, we're gonna meet one, hear one, get right. more understanding other than their multiple joint. No, it's dead. Okay, great. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> then he's flying all of a sudden, as one does in a dream. Uh, now I'm flying, and uh, as a wyvil, as a wyvil. Wivels wobble, but they don't fall down. I'm going to say it every time, just so you know. Um, and uh, he's flying behind a dragon, giant dragon, uh, it's soul so, taken. It's, it's the Silchus. white dragon. Yeah, it's Silchus. It's Silchus Ruin in his Elent soul taken form. They're drinking Tiam's blood, which is, I guess, what you do if you want to ascend. Mm -hmm. One way, I guess. Uh, more than Anamander Rake. I was like, whoa, Udinas knows about Anamander Rake. Interesting. That's a name I haven't heard for <laughs> several chapters. Um, <laughs> and uh, he knows he knows that the, the betrayal is about to happen. So just his weapons shatter. Is this uh, the... Is this the scene where, it, like, as they're flying, they're being followed by a white crow? Or is that in the future? Yes, white yeah. crow. Yeah. Uh, and then he wakes up, and he's like, Wither, I, I just saw the craziest thing. And he's like, I, I wasn't there. I, I, I couldn't follow you, bro. <laughs> yeah, you went far away, buddy. Yeah. Interesting. So, cut to dinner time. Family dinner, sitting around. Mayan, troll, all the... All the Sengar family, mom and dad, the three bros, awkward. <laughs> Very Mayan's awkward. there. Which brother is she flirting with? We don't know. Uh, it's interesting because like as – I mean this is like our first glimpse of like being honestly physically closer to her because we've always seen her from a distance. And so being at this yeah. table with her, you know, we get more of those glimpses through Troll's perspective of when Rulad talks – He's like, am I noticing that she's like annoyed? Is she angry? There's like something boiling beneath the surface that to me either reads as like Rulad really is like putting himself upon her in a way that she's like, Ugh. yeah, or she yeah. fully doesn't want to be in any of this. And I can't well, tell what's what. I also love that Troll is having this own internal struggle of like, am, am I so concerned about the worst possible thing that could happen that I'm just projecting all of this. Mm. Like, I love his, he's constantly like, I'm just, I'm Mr. Doom and gloom. I'm always thinking the worst of everybody. Am I, am I seeing things that aren't there? Yeah. I loved that. I loved all of that self doubt that he's expressing. It was such a cool <laughs> inner monologue. Mm hmm. Udnas come, uh, comes in like, here's your phone, ah! drops it on the ground. <laughs> They're like, oh, his hands are all bloody. That's the guy that would fought the wyvern. He's possessed by a wyvern. Mm. Uruth is like, ah, I'll check this out. Go ahead. I feel like from cuts on your palms, that seems like a quite a leap. leap of logic. A leap. <laughs> I'm not like exactly sure how they're like, he tripped his hands. He's possessed. I was like, wow, they really got there. Well, I think they got there from the fact that they saw him with the blood of the wyvern on him. And they're like, anything bad about him is probably due to the, that the thing, possession. crazy they're, thing. They're, they're just ready for it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I think that, well, I think that they are, the, the servants were kind of being portrayed as being super superstitious and ready to throw him under the bus. You know, like, I didn't have anything to do with it. It's the crazy possessed guy, you know? Mm. I think they were fearing retribution because we heard the White Witch say earlier, if they find out, you are, they will murder you. Yeah. Or maybe we find that out in a second. I don't know. At no, some no, point no. she says she they that. will murder you. Yeah. She said that when they were like in their dream brain dream brains together. Right, right, right. Yes. So I think it, it my interpretation was the, the the servants are ready to just throw somebody under the bus so none yeah. of them get yeah. Well, um, it's it's very interesting cuz like just back to the scene on the beach, Unas like all things considered cuz he's like I didn't really like the lethargy and I'm like happy doing this thing. Yeah. It's like, okay, they're servants, but like seems like a decent life until he's on the beach. He's like, if I go too far away, I'll get instantly killed. It's yeah. like they are slaves to these people. They are slaves. Yes. Yeah. That's like Dude, make no mistake. Don't, don't yes. Don't forget that. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. Um, anyway, Uruth is like, I'll get to the bottom of this. 
touches his head. Whoa. Checks out. Nope. He's fine. Not possessed. Mm-hmm. And uh, Unas is like, sweet. She doesn't see him. <laughs> Unas is like, okay. I'm not? Yeah, yeah I'm not. I mean, I'm not. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Why wouldn't I be? Why would I be? That's, yeah. I've not been, I've not been hearing voices at all. And then uh, they were like, all right, how dare you like get your weird bloody hands near our food? Go get executed or punished or whatever. And Mayan is like, don't you think that's a little extreme? You just raped his mind. And he was holding cloth. <laughs> yeah, he was just holding cloth. He wasn't touching it with his hands. Don't you yeah. think that's enough? And that like level of aggression, again, you know, uh, and Troll keeps sort of echoing this through the remainder of the chapter of like, but the women, they, they like, they, they know yeah. things, they're scheming things, there's knowledge yeah. there that's like, just like out sort of like in the fog of of war within like the mysteries of these tribes um and mayans like spicy hit like instantly i can't tell if that's a comfortability as women who are bonded by these not quite clear things happening around us or again just a pointed explosion of her annoyance of her distaste for being with this family that troll said earlier i can't interesting like i can't get a read on her but i i liked that that she had uh this moment because it just adds to the mystery of what she's thinking what she's feeling where does she stand and all of this yeah totally and i agree that that there's this undercurrent of like what are the women doing what are the women scheming there's like this whole other faction almost Mm -hmm. of what is their play here yeah they also we also oh go ahead nothing Uh, we also skipped over I think int- important stuff, which is oh yeah, to- the dad Tomad got mad, too mad, and, <laughs> yeah, and uh, he slams the table, ticked off at Roulad, like uh, not happy about how he's like, stop doing that. You're same thing that kind of uh, troll was saying, like you're strutting, you're being, you're acting weird, you're acting, you, you feel like you're you're smirking all the time, like you know something, you don't know anything. I liked it because when you're out in the world, it's like that parental context of why somebody might be the way that they are, why somebody fought, like tries to take power when they can take it. And Rulat out in the world being, I guess, an excellent swordsman, though unbloodied, being, I guess, this handsome young buck in the, in the world, but then getting home and being like put in his place by – his dad in yeah. a way that's like, oh, it's not like really a healthy way to talk to your kids ever. It's like <laughs> right. it, it it really adds context to his frustrations, to why he would be so hungry for battle. If his dad's constantly like, I can't wait to have respect for you someday when you become a blooded warrior, but the day's yeah. not today. I hope someday it happens, but not yeah. today. Sit down. Right. It's like, that's like a crappy thing to hear from your dad. Yeah. Oh, it's totally. very and he, he's like, well, hopefully, maybe on this uh, this quest that you've been given, maybe you'll get bloody. And it's like, oh man, way to put pressure on your kid. Like something bad's gonna happen. I hope to lad. that you finally kill some people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's brutal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, very, very interesting scene. So many, so much subtext. Totally. Uh, then the final scene of the chapter, uh, Featherwitch is like, you moron, Udnas, what are you doing? <laughs> What are you doing? She could have seen everything. She could have figured it all out and murdered you right there. He's like, oh, but she didn't. Mm-hmm. She didn't. <laughs> I like that he wakes up like, huh? Huh? <laughs> Pretty good trick. Didn't I do good? Didn't I? I hid the crazy demon that's in my brain. Uh, <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> it's in my shadow now. They didn't look there. She looked here, not there. <laughs> and she's like, oh, all right. He's like, you know what? I love you. She's like, oh, don't say that. What if we get married? Ah, I would be like marrying a rat. <laughs> That's like rough. She's like, she's like, I am so far out of your league. <laughs> I am the feather witch. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. So uh, Wither is in the shadow mm-hmm. and uh, Udnas has this this creepy ominous ending where he's like, yes, we must repay all debts in full. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. What's he talking about? Whose debts? 
the I deaths mean, of Batista and D, right? Yeah, obviously. I yeah. think. I uh and it doesn't even also reveal he's like, I, it's in my shadow, and she's like, What? And then he's he either says or implies or Featherwitch just knows that there's also a wraith there. And she's like, That's impossible. They serve yeah. the adore. Why would they ever serve you? Right. It's like, well, I got s- some info. Yeah. So so good. So good. So good. Book good. Book as you good. Said at the top. Book, Book very good. good. Uh, and we have some quotes, our favorite passages. I, I think I told you before we started recording that I could have. Did I say this on air or did I just tell you? You said before? no, you said it on air. I said it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah I feel yeah. like I could have. Uh, this like almost all of chapter four, I could have been just a passage that I just read. Like I'm going to read all of chapter four now. So yeah. hunker down everybody. Instead, I went the opposite direction and I've picked, I've, I've pulled myself back to picking single sentences again, just for this week. Oh, good. But I want to hear what you selected first. I have one passage that is a little bit longer. I, it's interesting. Uh, I like that you chose single sentences. I might go back to that because I feel like my, my favorite sentences, quote unquote sentences, are like, it's not just about the language that's used, but the concepts. Yeah. And not like in the past, you know, we've had these deep thematic moments. So it's like, this is a thematic, like, but like the serpent spine in your brain yeah. is like a lore hit. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And this is like a thing that I just thought was so cool. This is like the Joker reveal moment of uh, Garen through the brain of Tail. Um. The problem with gold was the way that it crawled, where nothing else could. It seeped out from secrets, flowered in what should have been lifeless cracks. It strutted when it should have remained hidden beneath notice. Brazen as any weed between the cobbles, and if one was so inclined, one could track those roots all the way down. Sudden spending from kin of dead hirelings followed quickly, but not quickly enough, by sudden inexplicable demises. A strange severing that left the king's inquisitors with no one to question, no one to torture to find the source of the conspiracy. Assassination attempts were no small thing, after all, especially when the king himself was the target. Extraordinary, almost unbelievable success to have reached Discanar's own bedchamber, to stand poised above the man, mere heartbeats from delivering death. That particular sorcerer had never before shown such skill in this relevant arts. To conjure sand to fill the chests of two men was highest sorcery. That's why he's the Batman. He's the world's greatest <sighs> detective. Yeah. Because his superpower is I. The money don't lie. Money don't lie, buddy. Yeah. That's all don't add up. I love, I love it. it. So good. Ah. So good. All right. So I get, as I said, single sentences. This one, I just, for some reason, I just love how this was expressed. This is, um, when uh, Udnas is on the beach. The sun threw his shadow into his wake, pulled long and monstrous. Mm. The sun threw his shadow into his wake, pulled long and monstrous. And that's before he actually gets the wraith in the shadow. That's before we, it's, it's, it's literally foreshadowing. Mm. <laughs> So good. What a beautiful way to express it. To, like it, the sun is pulling the shit. Ah, oh, so good. So good. I'll only pull one more. Okay. Um, Because mine are longer. And again, uh, Tehal, my angel, my love. Um, <laughs> this is uh, him talking with Briss on the rooftop and them, like after their conversation of pointing out who is like whom in their family. You asked a moment ago how I honor the memory of our parents. I can tell you this, Briss. When I see you, how you stand, that deadly grace, your skill taught to you by his hand. Well, I have no need for memory. He stands before me right now. More than with Hull. Far more. And I'd hazard, I am much, as you say, like her. Thus, he spread his hands helplessly. You ask for help, but will not hear what I tell you. Need there be reminders of the fates of our parents? Need there be memory, Briss? We stand here, you and I, and play out once more the old familial tortures. 
The old familial tortures. So good. Mm. I thought for sure you were going to pick one from that first scene with Saren where she's looking at the, the stones. She, she's like, men look down and see rock, another rock, another <laughs> rock. And women look down and see, there's a bunch of rocks. I just thought that was such a great passage too. There's, um, a, like, I felt like I almost wanted to pull that whole scene of Saren oh, yeah. looking on. But I was like too... <laughs> it's it's it was it's too all... like sad and resonant. I feel like things that like cut me like so deep. It's like so personal. Yeah, uh, like just to cut in like the feeling of being. I have like this distinct memory of what I started at Blizzard, and I was an intern. And at the time, there's no women around me. I think I was two women on the floor, and knowing that there's going to be another animator, another woman starting a month after I started and the fear I felt for that month mm. of wondering, is this going to be a woman who will welcome me and talk with me wow. and be an ally? Or is this will be a woman who is territorial, will tear me down and will make this a bad experience for me because women are taught to be competitive and combative yeah. and yeah. like hate each other. And I was so lucky that it was my dear friend, Karina kingdom. And we were like, an inseparable bond from the moment she started. Mm -hmm. And I will never forget that month of fear and wow. never stop appreciating that she was who she was and the, the leverage and the confidence that that gave like the rest of my trajectory of my life. I love so that. it's amazing. Yeah. Anyway, what sorry. A, what a wonderful, wonderful <laughs> thing to share. Um, but yeah, I, I, I was going to pick part of that section as well but i like i said i read the whole thing to my wife and i was like there's no way there's nowhere to edit this it's all great so just re, re read the if you're book. watching this reread <laughs> yeah, read the book but also reread that first scene with saren it's just exquisite exquisite mm -hmm. okay this is another single sentence that i absolutely love um we are not born innocent simply unmeasured <sighs> mm unmeasured mm. not untested not unknown unmeasured perfect word perfect word for that mm -hmm. um all right uh i think i have two more real quick do it do, um, it, do it uh oh this is a little bit more than one one sentence but <clears throat> um this is when uh <laughs> when silchus shows up the ghost of silchus shows up and he's like, you guys suck. And, and Hull goes, of what do you accuse her, ghost? Talking about Saren. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> he goes, a thousand. A thousand upon a thousand misdeeds. Her, you, your kind. The gods are as nothing. Demons less than children. Every ascendant and awkward mummer compared to you. Is it ever the way, I wonder, that depravity thrives in the folds of a flower? When its season has come, the secret seeds of decay hidden between the burgeoning glory, all of us here in your wake, we are as nothing. Ooh, uh... Dude, it's just like, dude was a soul-taken dragon. And it's like, what are we supposed to do? You idiots, the <laughs> rabble, the hoi polloi. Humans, he's not human, whatever, you know, yeah. just like people, people are the problem. Mm -hmm. We're nothing. You look beautiful. You're a flower. The seeds of decay are in there. You're going to ruin everything. My name is ruin. I know ruin. <laughs> you think I don't know ruin? <laughs> Literally, my name is ruin. <laughs> yeah. I was a beautiful soul taken dragon and now I'm a spooky ghost. <laughs> this Life's is also bad. just a single sentence, but it starts with, uh, uh, troll saying uh, there will be ro there will be war, and fear saying there is always war, brother. Here's the sentence: faiths, words, and swords. History resounds with their intermi in interminable, interminable clash. I ruined it. Faith, <laughs> words, and swords. History resounds with their interminable clash. That's mm. it. Faith, words, and swords. That's what they, they will clash. That's yeah. what happens. Yeah. And great polls. sometimes in that order. Yeah. <laughs> interminable. Interminable is the word I couldn't pronounce. Interminable. Interminable. Right? Yeah. Interminable. 
Well, I ruined the last quote. I ended with a <laughs> real whimper there instead of a crescendo. But you get it. Uh, this book is amazing. Uh, thank you for being with us. Thank you for hanging out. We got two more chapters next week. We'll see you then. Remember, comment questions. We love your topics. We'll see you later. When the world's too dark of a place to be And you need an escape from reality Open up those pages It's our cry or fantasy Whatever genre you please And join a book club Cause you won't read it on your own Join a book club So you'll be held accountable It's just so means doing them But you're doing it with your friends Love.